We'll start with a book called Move, and this is a book by Rosa Beth Cantor. And your handout, I have a summary of the book, which I'll skip because that's why you're here. Uh, you can read the summary later and see how I did with the synopsis. So I want to start with the uh, quote that you see in the box. Now, y'all, you'll notice the page number is 259. So one of the things I like to do is I like to reorganize books. So I thought this quote ought to be first in the book. Since this is my synopsis, I pulled it up first, okay? So we're going to do this. For nearly six decades, America has neglected or underinvested in some critical aspects of transportation and infrastructure. Fallen behind in international comparisons, generated some of the world's best technology, but lagged in applying it, seated leadership in manufacturing for some transportation sectors, and let cities deteriorate and remain divided into rich and poor, often by race. The daily delays and longer-term delays in modernization jeopardize productivity and quality of life. America needs to move not simply for repair and renewal of aging systems, but also for reinvention of transportation and infrastructure through existing technology in the hands of every person to help us all become more mobile, more easily, and sustainable. And now, this is why she wrote the book. This is under background on your outline, because she was going to write another book on leadership. And what she did was she tripped on the pit of an edge of a bridge repair site causing her to limp for days and take a car to work instead of walking. It struck me in the lungs while breathing, <laughs> I'm sorry, fume-filled air on a stop-and-go drive on a so-called expressway, giving me time to contemplate health implications and global warming. It struck me in the heart when I learned of inner-city transit problems in a meeting of a nonprofit organization I served. Hours long commutes by multiple buses just to go a few miles to get an education. And then she rode the high speed trains in Japan, marveling at speed and efficiency unknown in the United States. And after being impressed by their ultra modern airport, and this topic started out as an intellectual abstraction but soon became personal. Since the problems strike us every day, why is it so hard to make progress and what should be done? And that quote on your outline where America stands, one frequent question in these conversations is why other countries can have world-class transportation systems and we can't. I respond that it's not because they're smarter, richer, or smaller, and thus potentially more manageable. It's a matter of priorities and politics. America has the expertise and innovation, and there's money to be found. There is an emerging consensus about the importance of buses and other forms of public transit. But nations that are outperforming the United States in these areas have greater faith in government and allocate public money for public works at the national level. Finally, your last quote, it's time to think differently. It's time to shape new expectations about who we are and what we can become. Let's take the idea that mobility is opportunity and that we're in a mobility race as an impetus to find common purpose. Let's start a national conversation with dialogues in every region to build support for action. And let's not delay. We don't want to be late for our appointment with the future. So um, quite a book for you know, whoever wins this. Uh, I, I think you really will enjoy it, and it'll certainly give you another outlook the next time you're in your car, on a bus, on a plane, and so forth. And uh, if you're overseas, well, that makes a difference as well. I hope you all enjoyed that synopsis of Move by Rosabeth Cannon.